kid. Seriously. Welcome to the legendary final return of the Star Wars in Review podcast. Now, as season one draws to a close, we are the only podcast that asks you to name the system. Over there, it's Luke Neitzel, whose love of 1990s pop punk is well documented. And over here, it's Maya Madrid, who would rather just listen to The Cure. Every so often we get together to discuss news in the realm of Star Wars. We're going to answer some questions that kids seriously got and we will review an episode from the Clone Wars series. Luke, it's the end of the first season, buddy. How are you? I'm good, but m- most importantly, why would you listen to The Cure when you can listen to 311 cover The Cure for you and just make it so much you better? You are embarrassing yourself, <laughs> and I'm not even going to open that up because I don't want to hurt your feelings. Like I feel someday you will look back in shame. I thought maybe it was 10, 15 years ago, but it's still still going 311 keeps going forever. What's going on in your life, dude? What is going on in my life? Oh, man. You know, you always ask me that every week. I and do. I'm, every week I'm always like, I'm going to think about that so I have an actual answer when you he brings it up. You just not have an answer? I just never think about it. Or, or maybe it's too intimidating doing this all the do time. Do I intimidate you when apparently, I come at you? Apparently. Uh, I'm excited for the World Cup final. Yeah. That's... Your guys and my guys. Yeah, but I'm happy with whoever. Right. I, you know. You like France, too. But yeah. I, was, I was thinking, I was going to talk about this a little bit. By the time this gets posted, it'll be done. Do mm-hmm. we maybe want to little put a little something something on this? I gave this a little thought. Maybe have me sing the Minnesota Vikings school song on here, and if you win, maybe like a Green Bay Packer, maybe the I Am Madrid song. I don't know that. Oh, I know you'd have to prep yourself and then okay. sing. For well, everybody. the Packer one would be easy because it's just saying go Packers. No, go not that over, one. Right? You can't get out that easy. It would oh, be okay. it would be the I am Madrid song. You'd have to sing the chorus. Okay, but I'm not necessarily rooting for one team over oh, the other. Oh, you have I'm a happy. shirt. You have a shirt. Well, yeah, and I have an Henri jersey back there too. We're not talking about the Henri so, jersey. We're talking about the Croatia shirt. Oh, all right. Yeah, I do have a Croatia shirt. I actually uh, looked at buying France's stuff because they have the best logo, but yeah. man, they have really ugly stuff this year other than their Le Cocardie. The Cocardie is the uh, my current uh, yeah, well, Nike like effed up everything else about yeah. their their merch this year. Because I actually went there. I went to the soccer store looking, looking probably for France stuff, but it was really hideous. And then I found that Croatia shirt and got excited because be- Croatia jerseys are beautiful. Oh, they're the best. They're the best in all of soccer. It's them or Celtic, yeah. so it's it's pretty sweet. So I really just wanted uh, England out, and I got that, and it was in sad so fashion for them, and. I Which got makes to see... it better for us. Exactly. Oh, man. I It's the only game that I watched the post-game, Fox post-game, because I don't care for the Fox post-game at all. But teary-eyed Harry Kane interviews really <laughs> do it for me. So He's the guy I actually like on that, that was, team. You know, it's, for being England, they're actually a very likable yeah. team this go-around. We but, still have hate in our heart for John Terry's and Frank Lampard's of the world. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, I mean, put Welbeck in, they would have been fine, but, you know. <laughs> they didn't want to use him, so they use you get what you deserve. Stick with Harry Kane, I guess. So, I no, I'm excited to, to watch that. It's weird that it's done. It goes so fast, but it's, like, the best best month of TV there it's, is. For it'll the four soon be it, gone, and we'll goes. be depressed. Hey, speaking of depressed... You know, I, we've been talking about my depression, and it may stem from Cristiano Ronaldo, my favorite player. My favorite player, really my first or second player, favorite player for the last 12 years. I mean, when I first started walking, watching soccer in 2006, I just loved the way he played. I cheered for Portugal in that World Cup and um, was super excited when he came to my favorite team, Real Madrid. We used to sit and um, email back and forth about during that whole transfer thing about how badly I wanted him, and now he has left Madrid um, right move for him, you know, pl- players seem to go on longer in that I- Italian league. It's the right move for Madrid. You get $100 million for a 33-year-old player, but I'm just sad, dude. I mean, that was my guy. He's a player that I've just loved. Came over in the, in the summer of t- 2008. I actually went to Madrid, and I asked all the people, like the icebreaker of uh, Spanish people, was Donde esta Cristiano Ronaldo, because he was supposed to come that summer, if you remember, and then didn't come until the next one. And I've been thinking about that a lot. Um, Jed, friend of the show, we, he and I and you have talked a lot about Cristiano, and it's, you know, after four Champions League titles, two La Liga titles, two Copa del Rey titles, it's 
it's just sad. Your favorite team, your favorite player leaves. Like, well, what do you do? Yeah, you know, they do all the time. It's not the first time that's happened to you in other sports. That's true. So, You're going to bring up Farm? You want to talk about Farm? Oh, we could. Okay, go ahead. I, no, but, you know, I, that that happens all the time. I mean, I, you know, when Henri left and when Bergkamp left and all the stuff, it was sad. But it's the way it goes, and then someone else comes in and takes up their spot. I mean, it's Madrid. They're going to be able to go out and buy someone else, and they already have lots of great guys on there. To start, I mean, Isco's fun to watch. Not yeah. quite the same, but he's still pretty fun to watch. We went and saw him live this last summer, and obviously Bale's not too bad. But So what's what's next? Do you, have, you throw all that money at Mbappe? Do you throw all that money at Harry Kane? Where, where are I, they going? I will tell you, I, I, it's Madrid, so they're going to they're gonna try to make a splash. Yeah. And one of these and four it, players... It's Perez, too, isn't it, still? Yeah. 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 So, um, and he hasn't spent anything in three years. Oh wow! It's I mean he spent a little bit, but not like the big. Not sum. Madrid He's, spending, right? So one of these four players I would be happy with: Harry Kane, um, Mbappe, Neymar, or Eden Hazard. Okay, one of those. Four well, I'm gonna hope for Hazard or Kane just to get them away from Arsenal. Sure, no, that makes sense. Um, the other, I would I would be fine with uh, uh, Robert Lewandowski. Um, How old is he now? He's like 30, or 29, 30. Okay. Um, he just looks older. Yeah, but I mean, I would like like a real a real striker. If you look, he Cristiano Ronaldo shot between, I think, seven and eight times a game, and the next closest guy was Bale, who shot about half that much, and Bale was coming off the bench. So there's not a lot of shooting that comes from other places from the field. So you need, you need somebody who's going to put the ball in the back of the net. Maybe that means Hazard's not the guy. Uh, maybe that means Mbappe is, is the best, or Lewandowski is the best fit. Um, I could really do without Kareem Benzema. I really yeah. don't like him as a human being from from everything that I've read about him. I don't so, think his value is going to get any higher Benzema, yeah, as far as did. selling either. Right. So. so that's probably enough soccer talk for the viewers. Shall we uh, skip on over to the news? Let's do it. Luke Forbes, which is a magazine and a website created by Steve Forbes, the man who in 1996 ran for president on the platform of a flat tax and being weird, uh, (laughs) he ran an article about the end of Hollywood as we know it. We're six months away from the following endpoints in nerd movies and in the X-Men, in this incarnation of the Avengers, and the new Star Wars trilogy. Next year is the end of all of these. So uh, I'm going to talk about each of these and get your thoughts on each of the, the, the end of each of these franchises. So in February, that comes first, uh, we'll see the likely end to the longest running comic book, comic book movie series, The X-Men, when Dark Phoenix hits the big screen on Valentine's Day. By the way, if you go to an X-Men movie with Jim, I'm going to kill you <laughs> because the X-Men are our thing. And if you have now gone and done that with him, I don't think I can ever forgive no. you. But anyways, just just don't. Don't call dibs on Ant-Man, because I already bought my tickets with him tomorrow. Yeah, well, I, I kind of knew that that was happening, <laughs> even though you went to Ant-Man with me the first time. But anyways. Um, that was pre-Jim. We don't think about those years. <laughs> this is the final episodic movie of this series, depending on what you think about New Mutants, where you put that. Um, and the series started all the way back in 2000, with plenty of hits like X2 and Days of Future Past, sneaky good movies like X-Men First Class, and one of the greatest movies of all time in the comic book uh, genre in Logan. Luke, what are your thoughts about this all coming to a close? Are you excited about Disney getting its hands on the mutants? Or would you rather Comcast buy Fox movies and keep it separate? Where do you rate this film franchise over time? I'm not sad that this continuity of X-Men is dying because I think it's gotten stale and I get less and less excited for them. Even though I, I liked First Class and I liked Days of Future Past more than I thought I would, and I thought what everyone thinks of X-Men Apocalypse. And I, but, you know, part of the reason Logan was so good is because they didn't care about tying it into a continuity. They just made the best movie they possibly could with that character. And I think it really hit every everything it could have. It Do was, you think they should have ended it there? No, I'm, I'm fine with them with them doing last no, it's not last stand dark phoenix or wh- whatever they <laughs> oh, man, they want to do if they want to they want to give it one more go before it all ends and you know what even if this gets bought by disney if if dark phoenix is a massive hit then the disney will just fold that in anyway i mean mm-hmm. you know someone can snap their fingers and make dimensions merge and you can bring all those people in if that's how you want to do it but i think it is 
a franchise cinematically that's gotten stale and could really use from, you know, some time off, though we probably won't get that, and could use some new energy and some new perspective and some some new life. I'm okay, really, with either Marvel or Comcast taking it. The MCU's got a lot of stuff, so I I think they can manage it because they seem to be the smartest about managing these universes. But I I wonder if it's just too much stuff to have coming at us because we're already getting, what, three movies a year minimum? So if it starts getting to four or five because you're bringing in Fantastic Four movies and X-Men movies and, you know, if you're talking about X-Men movies, it's not just the core team. You're also talking about Deadpool and you're also talking about possibly New Mutants and things like that that could go well. So it, it could just be too much. So if Comcast got it and it ended up being a separate thing, like I'm not one of those people who's, you know, beating their head against a wall waiting for Wolverine to fight Hulk. Like I'm, I'm okay if that never happens. So I'm really just good with whoever it is, but I'm ready for it to not be Fox, for it to start over and be fresh and to be cast completely different. You know, I I want a, a really young, short Wolverine, uh, someone who's going to do something completely different than what Jackman did. This is one of my... This was my favorite comic book property growing up, mm-hmm. and Wolverine was my favorite character growing up. So I have a lot of affinity for it. X2 will always rank way higher on my comic book movie list than it does on almost everyone else's. Logan's outstanding. I've liked a lot of these movies, so I think it's it's a really... It, it's one that everyone will look back fondly on as a franchise because it was one of the first, and one of the first to do it well and right. And then it went off the rails with Last Stand a little bit and X-Men Origins, but I, I think it'll it'll look back on it fondly, and I've watched the first one relatively recently and it wasn't as dated as I thought it might mm-hmm. feel. So I, I think they could hold up relatively well. Like we've certainly made better movies than these X-Men movies in the MCU. Um, I, I think that not just Christopher Nolan, but I know you would disagree. I'd put Wonder Woman ahead of a lot of these movies. So I think they've done things that are better more recently, but I'll always look back at these as ones that really helped start the, yeah. the genre. And uh, yeah, I, this is a franchise that I really loved. I loved the first two X Men films a lot, like just huge. And I think this, like you said, played a huge role in what comic book movies would later become. Feige himself uh, did a lot of his early work on this series and kind of figured himself out for for later. And I think the casting was just amazing, both in the first group of series, and then when you get the McAvoy um, casting with X Men Future ca- uh, Future pa- or, I'm sorry, X Men First Class, and the casting is just great. And for it to go on 18 years and still be relevant, albeit taking a backseat to Marvel, I think is just awesome. And I'm going to miss it, you know. Um, I'm excited for whatever happens, but I but I will, like you said, look back fondly. So in May, we're going to see the end of this art incarnation of The Avengers, which has had its own long run with unbelievable box office success and a long string of movies with interconnecting parts that have made it the must-see movie series over and over and over for the better part of a decade. Luke, what sorts of changes do you see coming after the Avengers 4 movie to that universe? Predict the future. Uh, I Well, I think most everyone's going to survive the fourth movie and come, come back to life. And I think it, that Robert Downey Jr. is going to be who dies. You know, it's Marvel, so they could always bring him back however they want. But I just felt the way the story was going with him kind of being the one who, over the course of all these movies, is basically the one screwing everything up and causing all the problems, creating Ultron, creating the problems with in Civil War, and then, you know, with the the Spider-Man father-son mm. relationship and Spider-Man dying, all those type of things. I think it's going to... Spoilers. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to come down to, to him sacrificing himself to bring everyone back. So I think he'll be gone. But, I mean, they have so many characters. I think it's going to kind of seamlessly transition... To, you know, I, I I get the impression that we could get more Thor movies based on how well that did and the fact that Chris Hemsworth doesn't have a ton of success outside of the MCU. So we could get more of those. I think they're going to be a strong push on Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, Black Panther, obviously, they were going to have to rely on heavily. And they seem to want to give a little bit more of a push to, to Doctor Strange. So you're still going to get a bunch of big-name characters. I was trying to think in my head, villain-wise where you go from this after Thanos. Like, what's the big Avengers villain that's going to follow this? I mean, if they do acquire Fox, you would have Galactus. Galactus and Doom. 
But do you want to... Doom would be the best one, I guess I would think. Because Galactus is a cool thing, but I don't know how well that translates, and I don't know if I want another big, bad space mm -hmm. monster-type guy, because that's what we've been building with, with Thanos for so long. So, so Doom would be the best one. But if they lose out to Comcast, which I don't think is going to happen, I mean, where... Who, who's the villain that you're building around? It's a great question. I mean, what what would you do? Um, I, I my hope is that they do a smaller story. Yeah, that they would kind of bring it, you know, pull everything in. That becomes really difficult with Strange. Yeah, uh, because he can just fix everything. Yeah, and Captain Marvel too right. is yeah. So uh, that would be my hope. How you do that, I'm not so sure. I think they kind of have to get one of those, but either Galactus, which I wouldn't prefer Galactus. I prefer Doom again, trying to bring it um, sort together. Um, halfway through these movies, I, th I think Marvel kind of realized that they had two major problems. One, they had a problem with, uh, villains, which they have gone a long way in fixing. Yep. And I think the other they've gone a long way in fixing is their idea about stakes. We talked a couple years ago in this very studio <laughs> about the lack of stakes in an Avenger movie, and that was something that you were frustrated with. And now when you juxtapose that with what's happening here, I think at the end, Robert Downey Jr., or Iron Man, saves everybody but also the other three main avengers too i think captain america dies i think iron man dies i think hulk dies and i think thor dies. Hmm. i think that's and and not black widow because they want to make the black widow movie yeah and not hawkeye because no one cares which i think i and i think just side note i think the black widow movie is could be a really great thing that we would want like a mm -hmm. small spy mm -hmm. espionage self-contained story absolutely and if you could throw daredevil in it i, I would cry to <laughs> joy um the next Avengers, like you said, this Captain Marvel, Black Panther, Strange, and Spider Man. That's who I have on my list. And they'll go on in the next big arc. I want it to be small. That's when I want the X Men and Fantastic Four. So, you know how, like, we had these new movies of Black Panther and stuff start up? That's when I want that story to be. So, like, the whole mutant story could come after this group gets their run. Their run. And with great characters like Strange and especially Captain Marvel, who I love, I love that character, and huge box office hits like Black Panther and Spider Man. These group, this group needs its own arc. So. Well, and my question too is if they get these X Men rights, do you go with a full X Men movie, X Men launch, mutants, and all those things? Because that'd be it'll be a weird integration narratively because mutants go against everything else. A they they should have been around for forever. It's weird that we haven't seen them ever in ten years or had them mentioned. And they have that weird conundrum where everyone hates mutants, but everyone loves superheroes, which mm -hmm. never really makes sense. So part of me wondered if you you don't just launch with a full X-Men movie, you just launch with a Wolverine movie, or you put Wolverine in an Avengers movie, and then you slowly transition X-Men in rather than having it be all of them. Especially because I would guess that I, Wolverine's always the focal point of X-Men. Like, he's always the one Does it need to go be? after. He doesn't need to be, but I think that's what they'll see. You think MCU? See, I, I think MCU, and he if, is if, technically an Avenger too, right? But if if you look at one thing from the from the MCU is they took lesser known characters and made uh, Iron Man didn't mean shit when we were kids, but that was who they had Captain, the rights to. Right, that's why. But I'm saying like you can as long as you write a good story, it doesn't matter with the characters. And I would start with the original five X Men, and I would tell a story there, and then bring in that second group with Colossus and Storm. And, like, I would do it, because the fanboys are going to love it, and I think there's enough there to give characters like Scott Summers and Jean Grey and, um, you know, Iceman and Beast their their own story, and then kind of work off of that. There's no way they're going to sit on Wolverine. You're there's probably no right. way. You're probably right. Well, you could do them separate and bring him in. Yeah, later, that's true. You know, so that you're getting, you're getting kind of both of that. Um, really, and it's all just a countdown for Fantastic Four for me. You know I love the four, so. Finally, Star Wars Episode Nine: Return of the Deposit, will hit theaters at the end of the year. I want to take a look and map out the next phase of how it's going to go and predict what's going to happen from a macro scale. First question, how long until we get another movie after 2019? So what's the next episodic I film? The, okay, How long so until it, Ryan Johnson? I mean, assuming Ryan Johnson's the next episodic group. Or, I mean, oh, okay. So not not the not Star Wars saga or, right. or what? Not or not the Skywalker saga. Right. Ep, so not episode ten. Well, because I'm assuming Ryan Johnson's is not episode ten. Okay. It's its own. It'll be its own trilogy of things unrelated. Then then episode ten. How long? Well, I guess we'll answer both. How how far or until do we predict that Ryan Johnson's? But also, how long to, for episode ten? I, I'm going to go. What's going to sound a little nuts? But I'm going to say we go 7 to 10 years before episode 10. 
after it. I, I think don't think that sounds crazy. I think that sounds smart. I think they're going to let Ryan Johnson do his thing. They're going to let Benioff and Weiss do their thing. They're going to let those fill up the slots, and then they will revisit it further further down the road when you get episode 10. That's also kind of my hope mm-hmm. as well, because I'm in the camp of I don't want three a year. I want one a year, if that. So that that's what I'll guess is we're looking at seven, maybe ten years. Okay. Um, for Johnson's, you said... Go back. I think I missed. Like, oh, so I think Johnson's trilogy will probably start in 2019, 2020, and then um, you'll have Benioff and Weiss. I, I'm assuming both are probably getting trilogies. They haven't said how many movies right. Benioff and Weiss are doing, but I mean, if that's six movies plus you have an Obi Wan movie and possibly the Boba Fett James Mangold thing, I mean, that's eight movies. So that's eight years right there if you mm-hmm. do them one a year. So. I'm going to say, what, it's 2000, the next one will be out in 2019. Episode 9 is, yeah. Episode 9, so I'll say, I'll say 2029. No, I think that's, I, th- I think that would be a wise way to do it. I also like the idea of if we just kept those two standalone movies, if you just went Obi-Wan and just went Boba Fett, you could elongate the time period between the second and the third to sort of finish it off, you know, get two years in there. Um, I think that would be wise, but we'll have to see. Do you think Benioff, Benioff and Weiss movies will be interconnected with the Ryan Johnson movies, or do you think they're going to be completely separate from each other and tell two different stories? I think they're going to be completely separate and probably completely separate time frames. Okay. I don't know if... You know, a lot of speculation just because Game of Thrones is a medieval mm-hmm. type thing that they're doing Knights of the Old Republic, which I would be completely for, but that's not confirmed or anything. So I would be interested, or I would think that they're going to... They're just going to have them be not connected, not have them all work together, have it be their own things and their own separate time periods. And I, I wouldn't also mind seeing, because my assumption is that Ryan Johnson's is probably set around Last Jedi time, but just in a completely different area, mm. unrelated to what's going on in Last Jedi. If I was picking for Benioff and Weiss, I'd either do you know, Knights of the Old Republic, which I would probably lean towards just because it's a completely, completely blank canvas right now. But if they're gonna stay in, in the kind of existing timeline, then do a post a post Jedi pre Force Awakens story, uh, which would have its own complications because obviously you're gonna want Luke and Leia. Luke and Leia, yeah. So it, it would have to be kind of side characters of that as well because you're obviously not gonna get Luke and Leia unless you you can't you can't recast. I wouldn't think at this stage. Um, but what I what I'm what I don't necessarily need and I assume Benioff and Weiss aren't doing, is filling in the holes in the original trilogy. Like, time period holes. Yeah, I don't like, I don't, I don't want any of that. So I think Rogue One was enough for me. Mm-hmm. Solo was enough for me. Try and find a be. different era. What I would like, and I, th- I think I've said this on the show before, is for them to happen concurrently in the same time period, but have Benioff and Weiss deal with more of the political aspects of of what's going on throughout the galaxy and then ryan johnson to get real weird with the force like out in in the in the outer uh reaches of space past the outer rim um so that they're somewhat connected and you could have that sort of like call outs a couple times in the movies but that they don't need to necessarily affect each other like i think it would be awesome if you had like a team of jedis who had to like go out and explore outer like the outer reaches yeah something like that like i think because then he would have so much freedom um, which I think is going to be how, like, Ryan Johnson takes his successes in The Last Jedi and builds on those to um, to get pretty much everybody to like it. Yeah, yeah. Say you had a bunch, you had, like, a group of Jedi that escaped Darth Vader's purge of the Jedi, and they are just so far out in deep space. And at this stage, they've passed away because they're old, but they have kids and whatever that are Force-sensitive and but don't know how to use it. You know, something like that, I think, would be could be really fun yeah and you could use some of the characters from rebels and you know and ahsoka yeah. and stuff or like you know have shout outs to them that like nerds like us would love and yeah and you know like background jedi in the original trilogy or in the prequel trilogies that mm-hmm. you could pull out of yeah i think they could do a lot of fun stuff with that my last question when it comes to this is how oh we already talked about the forward the time jump um as far as when we would see potentially in episode 10 but how far in the story do you think that would be? And do you think Ray, Poe, Finn, or Kylo Ren will be in that episode ten years down the road? At least some of them will be for sure. I think. I think it'll it'll be. You know, if you think about that, think about our kids 
who like going to these movies now and they're, you know, seven, eight, you know, six, seven, eight. So they'll be in their teenage years. So they'll be hitting the the nostalgia of seeing the characters they, they liked as little kids coming back. And I do think it is nice to, you know, I'm the guy who's always harping on doing new things, but I still want it to be connected. Mm-hmm. I just don't want to see the same plot points right. revisited. So I, I think you'll, you'll at least have some of them and, you know, if Anthony Daniels is still alive, Lord knows he'll be begging to be on that set and be in there. So we'll at least get that. I think you cut his his words like South Park cut chefs. Oh, uh, dialogue that'd be amazing. <laughs> just, just splice it together because um, he's heavens knows he's got enough tape out there. Yeah. Well, it's time for the segment where Luke uses his First Amendment rights to talk about feelings, and because we are red blooded Americans, we will immediately reward him or mock him. Sponsored by David Byrne, it's Am I Right or Am I Wrong? Luke, last week you were a one runaway victor hitting all of your first four questions before the inevitable coasting made the score seem closer than it should have been. Nevertheless, you're up for three in a row. Can you tell us about your preparation this week and how it changes when you're in the middle of a streak like this? Oh, you know, I just keep my head focused one base at a time, blah, 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 a lot more push-ups, you know. Make sure I, I stick to lean proteins. Good. So you feel things. focused tonight? Yeah. Ready to go? Early on, going for three in a row. All right, here we go. Seven questions. You must get four. Number one. Kevin Smith, hero to Maya Madrid and the world, laid out a shocking idea that was downright terrible this week when he encouraged J.J. Abrams to bring back Han Solo. And if he did, Smith said he would kiss the director. Luke, no softball questions this week. You and I already know this is a terrible idea. Worse than Clerks 2, even. But, if there is a worst character to resurrect in the Star Wars universe, who would it be? Who is the worst one? Not Han Solo. Who's and they, ha- they have to be dead? It has to be the worst, yes. They have to be our... Well, because some of the from the prequels would be dead, we just assume by age. Okay. Or whatnot, because, I mean, the worst character in the whole thing is Jar Jar. That would be who I would least want to have be a focal point of anything. So I can't technically say he's dead or whatever because I don't know how long a fish person lives on Naboo. But you're not going to find a character that's going to aggravate me more than him if they were to bring in. That was a, an excellent cut. But unfortunately it had a just foul. Because I would say that that's the second most. The number one is right in front of your face. It's Luke Skywalker. It would be equally as bad narratively, but would be completely eradicate The Last Jedi, which would make my Twitter feed even more annoying than it is right now, between the trolls who start petitions to get The Last Jedi removed from canon on one side, and the Raylo fanatics on the other. I finally agree with Kylo Ren. Let the past die. Don't bring back Luke Skywalker. Well, but he'll be back as a ghost. I guarantee you he'll be back in episode 9 Do as a ghost. you want to make a bet on that? I yeah. don't think he's going to. I think right, he's going to. Let's make a bet. Okay. We're going to bet. We'll, we'll talk about the terms okay. when we come back next week okay. for the for the brand new okay. season just, two just review. Remember who's directing before you make the stakes too high. Oh, Ooh, that, was a, that was a low blow. It's not a low blow, but it's, it's I think what you're, he does. I, th- I think you're mad because you started off 0 for 1. Then we go to number two. Bullshit question. Luke. <laughs> hey, I call him as a season. <laughs> number two. Solo, a Star Wars story has a rumored DVD release of September 25th. We know that you won't buy this movie because you said so, and you are mostly a man of your word. The bigger question is, however... Celia will you, Humble. <laughs> will you ever watch this movie again, yes or no? I'm sure I will at some point. You know, if my son wants it, we we will get it and check it out, or it'll be on... It'll be on HBO or something like that, and I'll throw it on. I mean, Last Jedi's on Netflix now, so if it came to Netflix, I'm sure I would throw it on once. So I guarantee you I will see it at least one more time, but I will not pay money for it for myself. Luke, I'm so sorry. This is actually, you are not going to watch this movie again, because this is how it's going to play out. You and I will have a bet about something in the distant future, and I will use this as my terms, In a because I love this movie. I saw it three times in the theater. This, Man of Steel, Meet Joe Black, and The Force Awakens are like the, the beautiful like four, four movie, three times in the theater. Anyways, you and I will use this as terms in a bet that I should win hands down. It will probably be something like Real Madrid versus Arsenal in the UEFA Super Cup. Nevertheless, I will still lose, and you will decide not to watch it as a point of emphasis for your entire life. <laughs> I, I, I don't see the movie as a referendum on you. Not yet. I just thought it was fine. Not yet. 
Hey, uh, number three. Carrie Russell is rumored to be cast in episode nine, and Twitter went crazy over whether or not she will end up being Ray's mother. Luke, call your shot. Will Carrie Russell be Ray's mother? No. She won't. Explain. I, I think they're going to leave that where they left it in Last Jedi. I, and I'm also hoping for that. And I think they're going to, they'll go around of her being, her being a more of a general leader. I see, I could see her shouldering more of the burden that Leia was initially going to do. Like, I don't think her character will 100% replace Leia. I think what they'll probably have to do is break that up among a few characters. But I could see her being the type of character that ends up filling that Filling role. role and i don't see her doing that as ray's mom i'm glad I, you ex- you explained yourself because i was gonna call you out on that one but your explanation i like better than my answer mine is yes she will but the trick is that it's going to be done in a flashback that will confirm that her parents are dead in the jakku pit and that will be that the way that jj Abrams oh. will trick us he will insist however during the lead up to the movie that she is not ray's mother but rather a character by the name of khan <laughs> it helps him throw us off the scent we'll never see it coming okay so i'm gonna give that to you so you're one for three all right um star wars newsnet question four speculated that the reaction to the last jedi may have changed jj abram's script in some way what say you Oh, I think that could be very possible. I could I could see them being, everyone at Lucasfilm being nervous. As much as they talk about how much they love the film and how much they've supported it and how much money it made for them, which it clearly did, I could see there always being a little bit of nerves. So I think there'll probably be some tweaks. Like, I don't think J.J. Abrams was writing a script and then completely threw it out because of The Last Jedi. But I could see them throwing in a little bit more fan service than maybe we got in Last Jedi. I mean... That could be why Billy D. Williams is coming. We're hearing about it now, as opposed to announcing it earlier. Maybe he's a little bit of a, an add-on late because they wanted to throw that in. So there will probably be some reactionary tweaks, which probably is healthy. But I don't. I don't think we're throwing out a whole movie and he's rewriting it to just satisfy the internet. Right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it to you. I don't believe that it has anything to do with Last Jedi. I think all scripts change, and so somebody got wind of it changing and. It changed for the betterment of the movie, not necessarily last night. But I like your answer, so we're going to give you two for four. Nice. Um, you know, it found it found a hole in the infill. Got through there. Perfect. Number five. So there's three left. You must get two of them. Uh. Uh-uh. Look, Emperor Palpatine is not included in Battlefront Two on the PS4, a game I have never played, but is extremely popular. It is also historically important to this show because the early versions are a game you played the expressed intent of killing Ewoks. Luke, who is the best character to kill Ewoks with? Chewbacca. Just have, have, because they would kind of trust Chewbacca or whatever, and as much as it would be fun, it's fun to lightsaber them, to just like physically rip them apart, seems like it would be so much more gratifying than the quick lightsaber. All right, I'm going to give that to you, because I had... Other Ewoks. Oh, that's pretty good, <laughs> so too. Wicket killing yeah. other Ewoks. No, but... Wicket's definitely first on the murder list. Yeah. So it needs to be... Oh, he needs to get murdered. You yeah. don't like Wicket as all of them? Nope. Okay. Nope. I think that yeah. will really drive the Ewok suffering home if Wicket gets it early and painfully. Oh, good. All right. You need... You have two questions left. You must Ooh. get one of them. If you go 0 for 2, um, you're in trouble. Yeah. Okay. Billy D. Williams seems now to be confirmed as cast in episode 9. Luke, first of all, did you know that his name was William December Williams? And uh, what happens to Lando in episode 9? I don't think he's going to... I did know that, actually, about his name or whatever. I once on eBay uh, lost out on bidding on a Colt 45 Billy D. Williams tin sign <laughs> that I wanted to hang down here. But um, I, I didn't win it, which was one of my biggest life's disappointments. But... I, I think I think what you're gonna see from him is is you know the 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 Republic they're not the Republic the um well I suppose they are kind of the the, the resistance is I mean when we leave Last Jedi it's down to like twenty thirty people mm-hmm. and they need someone to you know the, he's gonna be and you know Leia's gonna we're assuming Leia's gonna be dead when the movie starts or die quickly in the movie. He's going to be kind of the old hero that they've heard about that they tried to to go to 
for for help. Not quite. It, it's going to be a smaller plot point, though. Like the whole movie isn't going to be about finding Lando and having Lando <laughs> leave. He just turns on the top of some mountain and yeah. then throws a lightsaber over <laughs> his shoulder. And... Exactly. <laughs> throws a cape over his shoulder over the mountain. They try to hand him his cape, and he like throws it, <laughs> throws it off the mountain. So I, I think, but I think it'll be a smaller supporting role where he's kind of a guy they they lean on for advice being this this old hero and maybe hopefully we get to see him maybe fly the falcon i think that would be that would be that would be the bit of nostalgia that i would like even you know if it doesn't work out it's no big deal um but i i think it's going to be that type of role but to a much lesser extent than we've seen with the main three in these movies now you hit that one really hard but it was right at somebody because you missed a very important thing he dies just like your childhood Oh. Question seven. I spent all week on Twitter being inundated with all this Raylo stuff. The fan art and the cutesy pictures are starting to mess with my mind. Call your shot. Is Ray ending up with Finn, Poe, Kylo Ren, or nobody? Oh my gosh, that's what I didn't even know what Raylo was. Oh god, it's so, it's so apparently you don't I follow the same people things. I follow. Yeah. No, apparently well I don't look at my Twitter well, account. Well, I think that might be the problem. Yeah, this is why I've been a And I think I follow I think I follow eleven people. Let me tell so. you, I, uh, I I follow lots of people within the Star Wars fandom, and the people on the both sides of these issues now are driving me crazy. Uh, like, like there's the 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 wholesome like people who just really love Kylo Ren and Raylo together, and like they they don't mean anything bad by it, and they drop pictures sure. of them and stuff, and I just get like I just drive me crazy. And then you have the other idiots who are like putting together petitions and yeah. like, everything that everybody says well, be like, no, no, mean, Luke Skywalker do this. Yeah. It's like shut up, all of you. Please just stop. You know how Fifty Shades of Grey started, right? No, it was Twilight fan fiction. She was writing a Twilight. Oh, fan fiction, and then realize people like it, so she turned it into Fifty Shades of Grey. So, good luck to you people out there making your erotic Raylo fiction out there. Hopefully it, it turns into something. I think she's going to end up with none of them. And I think it's not, it's going to be a, she doesn't need any of them. She doesn't need to to be, she doesn't need a guy to make her arc complete and her story complete. I think that's the mode we're, we're going to go for. Um, so she's she's gonna end up alone, and she's gonna be presented as a stronger character because of it. And it's it, yeah, her and Kylo Ren doesn't. I I don't want Kylo Ren's redemption. I think part of the point of the Last Jedi is he was on that cliff, and he 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 leapt off and said, "I'm not coming back." So if they redeemed him, I would be really disappointed. So that puts him off the table. Um, plus, she, she's watched him do so much horrible shit that I don't think she can do it. And um, you know. The the Finn the Finn thing, I, I don't know. I just it just would seem it would seem to be making a relationship to put a relationship in a movie rather than it seems like that's anything coming naturally. I see their I've never saw their bond. I know he makes the flirty kind of like yeah, you got a boyfriend, yeah, type type deal. But I see that more as uh, you know, very similar to his relationship with Poe, where you know they don't spend a lot of time together, but they went through something really really traumatic that people in war go through together and they have a bond now because of it. And he has that same thing with Ray. So I don't see that as a romantic bond between them. I see it as more platonic. We've been through the worst possible, you know, war and battles we could, and we really care about each other. So I I think she's going to be, she's, she's not going to end up with any of them. And it's not, it's not going to be love story based. Like it's not going to be, she misses out on some or she's going to be with Kylo Ren, but he dies or, you know, Mm -hmm. blah, blah. It's just, it's not going to be that. She doesn't need that for her arc. If any of them made sense to me, it would be Finn. Yeah. If any of them. Yeah. But you're right. You get it. On the last shot, you get through, so you are four or seven. She's going to be a Jedi. Mm-hmm. And her rebuke of both Kylo Ren and Luke Skywalker and their family whininess will have her reestablish the Jedi Knights of old. And I don't mean the douchey whiny ones of the Skywalker generation. What I mean, and I don't mean the ones of the prequels and the Clone Wars series who are super dicks. I mean the old ones that we haven't seen in the movies. The badasses and who do the right thing. She's going to bring those back and she doesn't need a dude. It says no. She's going to reestablish the Jedi. This is my question about the Jedi yeah. and their their attachment rule or whatever. Like, they know for a fact that the Force is just a biological agent. Why wouldn't she be having all the Jedi's bang constantly yeah, to make know. better Jedi's? All the time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. 
<laughs> they should have. The Empire should have fallen apart because they couldn't stop fucking enough in the temple <laughs> to go out and stop Palpatine from taking over. That's how that should have happened. Oh my god. Well, on that note, we're gonna slide on. Congratulations. Slide, three, yeah. Three, yeah. Three, yeah. Oh, just imagine way. walking into, you know, Yoda <laughs> banning over Kes Bisto trying to create the most powerful Jedi ever made. <laughs> oh my god. Um, if you're out there and you want to contact the show after that, we would love to hear what you have to say. This is obviously the season finale. We hope it's, it's, it's a banging episode. Banging. Uh, no, exactly. No pun intended. Uh, we can be reached at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com, or you can send us a message at kidsseriously, at Luke underscore Neitzel, or at Maya Madrid, and you fire off a question for everyone's favorite segment. This is emails that kids seriously got, and by the way, it doesn't have to be an email. Luke Javier Perez from SoCal writes, you guys have been doing a lot of favorites lately with lightsaber colors and ships. Who are your guys' favorite droids? Oh, K2, S.O., by far, yeah. C C three PO is annoying as fuck. I can't stand him. R two D two and BB eight are kind of cute, but their shtick gets kind of old for me. I hated the one in Solo. Um, and you know, I'm we're not gonna count Darth Vader as a droid. So, yeah, I'll go with I'll go with K two. I think he was the right blend of of humor, but still seeming like he should be where he should be, and that he would be effective in what they were tasking him with. Like, there's no reason to send you to be in all these places. Right. So. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. K2SO is the... His relationship um, with Cassian is... Yeah. I, I think is the best droid uh, human relationship that there is. And, you know, I like, I like R2-D2. R2-D2 would probably be second. Really like BB-8. But um, BB-8, does, BB-8 seems like a puppy. Yeah. More than, like, a character. Where K2O I, seems like a character right. on the same level. Uh, and I'm, I'm fine with BB-8 being a puppy. Yeah. I like that about him. Yeah. So, um... And he's there for kids. Kids love him, too. Yeah. So. All right, so let's move on to the Clone Wars series. Luke, I'm going to have you count time out right now, so this won't be part of the thing, because I have to look up the episode stuff, because I failed to write it on here. Oh, we're leaving that in. You're a dick. <laughs> Season finale, season one, episode 22, Hostage Crisis. A secret shared is a trust formed. I have no idea what that means. It means lie to everyone. Just tell one person. Written by Ewan Mahoney and directed by Giancarlo Volpe. Uh, This episode catalogs the attempts by Cad Bane to wreak havoc upon the Imperial, or the uh, Alliance Senate, the Republic Senate, sorry, and to get uh, Zero the Hut out of prison. Luke, take it away. So this doesn't have much of the opening narration. Basically, it just says that the uh, Republic is at war, which we kind of already knew a little bit about. (laughs) And that uh, Cad Bane is going to try and kidnap some senators. And we open up on Cad Bane, who ends up... He's on a ship on Coruscant, and this is the first time we've actually been heavily or completely on Coruscant for a whole episode. He is flying in with his little squad of bounty hunters, which includes some droids. Uh, It's not IG-88, but it's the same type of droid, as well as some other character designs that we're familiar with from the prequel movies. They are zooming in and are uh, basically they land on the Senate building landing platform where they encounter some of the Royal Guards. Uh, They are able to take them out. Uh, Cad Bane has a... I mean, he's Clint Eastwood, Mm -hmm. basically. He's got a real Wild West appearance, uh, which I love. Mm -hmm. I think he's a great character design. I'm excited because I know he plays a a bigger role throughout the course of the series. So it's good to to get him in there. And he lands there with his little group. They have this kind of Wild West standoff. He's got his pistol holstered. And then he actually just has a sniper positioned in another building who ends up just taking out those guards. And speaking of that sniper, she is the same character type from a character in Phantom Menace. 
And that is something that struck me right away by this episode. Two things. One, the amount of visual callbacks without actually calling back. You talk about the IG-88. You talk about uh, Cad Bane himself. I think his, his race is called the Duros. And that was, there was one of him in um, the original A New Hope in the, in the uh, cantina. And so there's all these visual callbacks, both to the original series and the prequels. And in addition, this is the most full world we've seen. They put on a lot of effort to make this feel like a complete lived-in world, which is something that I've been critical over the course of this season about. And I thought that was awesome. Those two things, like I just, I I noticed right away, um, you know, the landing platform looks like the same from the prequels or like just little bits like that or like the, the Imperial Senate Guard those yep. sorts of things. So um, I, I I really like this episode to begin with. Yeah, and it, it's it's you know it's Coruscant, so they 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 were able to use designs that were already there for them, which is nice. And you are right. The nice thing about Coruscant is most of these planets we've visited, they feel like there's one city of two hundred people, and that's the whole planet. Where this feels like a a just jam packed world full of completely different aliens, like you would think it would be. Now we cut across to Padme and Anakin, who are in her office in the Senate building. This is the first time we've seen them actually be presented as a married couple. Um, normally, you know, there's some some stolen glances and things like that, and him freaking out about her being captured constantly going on. But this is the first time they actually interact and talk as a, a couple. Uh, there's no one else around. Basically, he wants to. He's supposed to be on a meditation retreat or something, so he just wants to take a two week vacation with her somewhere else so they can be alone and forget about all this. But she doesn't really want to because she's trying to pass some bill on something that's important, and he actually gets kind of whiny toddlerish. He's a, in classic Skywalker fashion, he's a just a whiny bastard, and yeah. he's very manipulative yeah. and just a super dick. Like if this, if I saw my friend do this to uh, his girl, like I would have words with him. Be like, yeah. stop, stop pushing her into something she doesn't want to do. Guilt tripping her, yeah, for it doing was terrible. Yeah, she's he's trying like, to do things. For every the bad good. relationship that you witness in college is like happening yeah. right in front of us, which is the character. So I was okay yeah. with it. Yeah, no, it, it does fit. And what what's important about this interaction is that basically he makes some comments about. I'm going to prove to you how much you mean to me. Here's my lightsaber, which Anakin told me. Did you notice me. he gave it to her blade first? Yeah, I actually, I have that you... written down <laughs> right here. Gives lightsaber blade first, like yeah. he was pointing it at her. Uh, but he gives it to her to show how much he loves her. Is that or is that, like, I didn't know, but I was like, that's brilliant either way. Yeah. Like, like, what, what a dick. That, yeah. I just, anyway, at least his hand wasn't on the trigger. <laughs> but he gives, uh, he gives her his lightsaber. And then uh, we cut back to Bane's group who are going through the Senate building. And they have uh, another character design I liked, which I don't think he had a name, but he was basically a computer hacker. He was kind of this little short bubbly fish thing, fish man, who was able to hack into the power controls of the Senate building and shut everything down. So everyone is locked within their rooms. Uh, And right before this happened, Bail Organa, who's another character we haven't really seen from the prequels, shows up in... Padme's thing and tells her she has to leave to go to some Senate meeting or whatever. And she leaves with Anakin's lightsaber because he's hiding under the desk and she doesn't have a way to get it back to him. Because obviously no one can know they're married. I don't know why they couldn't be in the same room together. But like she couldn't say, hold on, I'm going to grab one thing and put the lightsaber down underneath yeah. the desk. But yeah. whatever. Or just be like, hey, thanks for briefing me on this battle plan, Jedi. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but whatever. I mean, there's there's a lot of that in this episode and a lot of that in the show that you just have to kind of right. forgive and look past. Because it's really not that big a deal. But basically, what this leads to is Padme is with Bale and some other senators in one part of the building. And Anakin is still... Uh, away from her without his lightsaber when the building basically gets locked down. And we also see the emperor or not the emperor at this time, but the chancellor is in his office and he is shut down and Bane takes all of those senators prisoner basically and wants to hold them hostage so that he can get the freedom of everyone's favorite, favorite character, zero, the Hutt. Oh God. Uh, we don't know why, but he wants zero, the Hutt freed. This is interesting to me only in the fact that it's the about the only episode we've seen where we're seeing kind of a, maybe we we had this with Hondo a little bit, but this is a nefarious villain who isn't working with the Separatists, doing anything with the Separatists. This is completely unrelated at this stage to the Separatists. So it's it, it was slightly interesting because he is having lots of negotiations with Palpatine, and this is the first time Palpatine isn't 
on the side of everything that's going on. Like, he's actually taken aback that someone did this and is willing to challenge him because he's in charge of both the Separatists and the, mm. the Republic. So I found that a little interesting, but they didn't really do much with it. So Anakin is end up, ends up running through the, the place without his lightsaber, and, you know, a Jedi without his lightsaber, I mean, he might as well be a paraplegic, right. you know, because they're completely worthless without him for some reason. But he gets into a fight with the IG-88 member of the group and is able to take it out. But the thing that the other members notice is that he doesn't have his lightsaber, so he'll he'll be easy to, you to know capture. You does have his lightsaber at this point? Padme Amidala. Yeah. And at any point, because there's several points when Cad Bane has his back turned right in front of her, she could have totally done a Snoke on him and sliced him in she, half. She could have, but he always had four other guys with guns on them in that room. Like, they weren't alone. His whole point. group was in there, so she could have, but then they they would have all been gunned down. And the one thing that he did immediately was kill one of those senators yeah. who tried to walk away, uh, which surprised me a little. We've been getting darker, and that was, mm-hmm. that was a blatant murder. Right in front of us. So I, th- I think that explains why she wouldn't do anything yeah. like that. That's fair. Um, they actually end up capturing Anakin. They actually shock him. Well, he doesn't have his lightsaber. No, I mean, what's right. he going to do? Or whatever. Oh, do you remember what the Senate was talking about? The privacy invasion bill. Oh, I know. I was like, wow, could you be more Patriot Act? <laughs> like, Yeah. Which, like, good for them. Yeah. Good for them for putting that type of stuff in. Because, I mean, that was, you know, what, 2008? 2008, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we were still dealing with, I mean, we still are dealing with those type of side effects. I mean, you know, Facebook's got all your info, so. They did. And they just sold it to a Russian company. Hey, well, nice of them. why not? Well, yeah, yeah, well, capitalism. We love it. Um, so Anakin is then uh, hauled in, and he's kind of knocked unconscious there. So basically, basically they their their plan is, is they're going to get zero freed, which Palpatine agrees to, and then they're going to... They're gonna get the the senator, the senators in exchange, which I'm fumbling through for some reason. So Zero is freed. They fly over to the prison, and he comes out, and oh, they didn't tone him down at all. He's still this. At, at crude... first, they did. The first sort of paragraph that he said, he was sort of muted, and I was like, oh, and then it just got terrible. No, nope, it's yeah, it's the lispy Truman Capote. And I wanted to ask you, I think we need to stop. Because this episode is so short. We have so much time that we can devote to this. What do you think is going through George Lucas's mind at this point? He knows the the backlash from episode one with the, the Trade Federation. But he still continues to do these things that we talk about every week. It's like he will not let them go. Well, What's in his mind? Is it like, I think this is funny and so fuck you guys. Or like, what, what's going on here? Yeah, you know, I it's I mean it's hard to say. I think with a lot of them, he's just I I could see him being the type of guy who goes, no, you know, continuity. We have to keep it the same. So if the Trade Federation sounded like this, then they should continue to sound like that. And I think with things like Zero the Hut, you know, in his mind, he I could see him being like, oh, I'm paying tribute to Truman Capote instead of just making it seem like it's a a feminine gay stereotype character. Uh, so, I, cause, cause I, I mean, I, you never know. I, obviously your heroes always let you down and he's not my hero by any standard, but I, I like to think he seems like a decent enough guy that he wasn't setting out to blatantly be offensive with these things. Is he just an old white guy? Old yeah. white guy just doesn't, doesn't get it. Right. Yeah. That would be my, my perception of it personally. So I, I think he just might be oblivious to, to what's going on. And I think he was in a position where he, he got a circle that wasn't ever going to... He had a circle of yes men. They weren't ever going to say, no, maybe you shouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I will say is is he, he must have learned some things at some standpoint, because I have a hard time believing that Jar Jar was meant to be relegated so so much in episode two and three. That's fan reaction, though. That wasn't... I don't think that was the racism. I think it was just fans didn't like him. Well, yeah, but he obviously... What I'm saying is he obviously adapted. Yeah. Because people hated something you just wish he would have picked up on some of the other things and they could have they could have changed it but yeah zero zero is a disappointment and he gets freed basically uh bane's plan then is he's going to uh blow up all the senators he has left but he has a bunch of bombs in the room and then he puts up a laser shield which it seems like anyone could have stepped over or under or under (laughs) to get out of but they're trapped by these lasers and there's bombs in the room i have great news though 
Do you know who has the lightsaber now? Oh my gosh, who? It's Anakin! That's right, because he's woken up and right. Padme gave it back, which I'm, I'm guessing must be the shared secret that we got in blue writing, because that's really relevant to this. But yeah, uh, right before he can blow them up, he cuts, Anakin cuts a hole in the floor, and all the senators escape. And then we see that uh, Cad Bane is flying away with Zero, kind of saying, like, hey, I freed you, now I need to get paid. And that's it. And I was a little dumbfounded when it actually ended because it didn't really seem like an ending. This whole episode, to me, felt like an opening crawl to a real episode. Mm -hmm. So maybe that was the plot, is to try to set up set up what's going to happen in episode, or in season two of this series of maybe having more of a clear direction of story-wise of where they're going. But it, it's not like it ended on a cliffhanger by any stretch of the imagination. The whole thing just felt kind of like weird setup. Yeah. It was weird setup. I, I think looking back as to how this series unfolded where the episodes were aired out of the creation dates and there was a lot of confusion and stuff like that, it is them sort of saying, at least I took it, as them sort of writing the ship to now. You know, everybody sure. I talk to who's watched the series says it gets really good with two and I think this is the reason why. Where they're able to write themselves and point in that direction, so I think that's what they were doing there. How many uh, how many pews are you gonna give this, buddy? Uh, you know, I'm gonna th oh, I, I struggle with it. I'm probably I'm gonna give it two. So there's good, there's good in this. I like Cad Bane a lot. I like that it just dove into the action. It it just went for it. In in theory, I like that they showed Padme and Anakin as an actual couple for the first time. Uh, really good use of color, I thought, because when they they cut the power, it kind of has this red light, like red emergency lights that light up the Senate building, but there was a lot of shadows, and it had really good music. There's a really good fight with Anakin without his lightsaber fighting this IG-88, and it had really tense music that kind of ramped up as the fight mm -hmm. ramped up. So there were things about it I really liked. We already touched on Zero the Hut, but we've now gone the full season. Padme's been captured every single episode she's ever been in and had to have been saved so it, it it hasn't gotten better it hasn't changed even if this is a course redirect for the series they're still doing that every single time and i can't believe that we're 26 episodes in and probably six or seven of them were her and every single time she is captured yep. it's ridiculous i'm not surprised at all I mean, no I, 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 that's kind of what i expected would happen for me um in my final listing of all 22 episodes i'm gonna slide this into uh, right between Yoda and Kip Fisto, and uh, <laughs> put it at, it's a place uh, to be on thirteen. I'm gonna go thirteen. 13. And there were things that I really like. Cad Bane may be my favorite new character that's been introduced. I really like Ahsoka, obviously, um, but I just think he's cool. Yes. He's just really, really cool. And he's the villain that we wanted, in my opinion, that we wanted Ventress to be, mm -hmm. but they just stopped doing things with Ventress. Mm -hmm. um, so, so maybe. I, I know we're going to get more adventurous, but he felt like a breath of fresh air having yeah. someone, not just a droid right. and a random leader. Right. He's awesome. And there were things, you know, the fight scenes were cool. A lot of cool things, but there's just not enough meat to this episode. It's a lot of things happening and I need more of themes and, and, the, and then zero kind of bottoms this out for me. So that's why it's down at yeah. 13. And it gives you the worry that Zero might be a major factor in Season 2. Oh, God. Which I don't, I don't want know. to be the no, case. No. Okay, here's a question for you. Would you rather have a focus on Zero or a focus on Jar Jar? Uh, Jar Jar. Really? I would rather have. Because at least, at least they seem to... not. They don't take Jar Jar seriously mm -hmm. as a character. So I can stomach that a little bit more than Zero, who they want to present to us as a serious, important character in the two times we've seen him. And he doesn't warrant that. And not that any stereotype is good and i'm not for any of them but you know when they lean to the lgbt ones that's something that sets me off mm -hmm. more so i mean they're both bad but that sets me off a lot more yeah i mean yeah it's picking two two evils so let's talk a little bit about uh other nerd news do you want me to go first or would you like to go first well first i'd like you to pause for my bumper well i you could just cut it right after the last thing i mean i believe in your skills <sighs> so much work and talk lazy bastard i'm a nerd we have news for the beautiful people there's a lot more of us in our view okay you go first uh so i'm watching this new show 
um, that's been kind of exciting. It's called Game of Thrones. Heard of it. Yeah, it's um, it's really fun. I'm in the second season now. I've been binging it. Nice. I even went and got... Uh, we were talking with, with Chill Pony, and Chill Pony had said... We were just talking about Westworld, and he said, well, why don't you go to the, um, the public library? And I was like, oh, I could just watch Game of Thrones that way. Because we had a free... The Sling did like a free HBO weekend, so I watched oh. the first season like that, and then immediately got the second season, and ended up tearing through that. So about halfway done with the second season. Love it. Love Lord Tyrion. I think he's he is just an awesome, awesome character. I like Jon Snow a lot. I like Arya a lot. Um, I'm interested in all the different things. I think it's really, really well done. Uh, a lot of boobs. A lot of boobs. Got to do that, which I think sometimes they went overboard a little bit, but... Um, very, very interesting. Kept, kept, keeps my interest all the way through, which is very rare for me. Did you know that Sean Bean was going to die? I yes, because I heard okay. people talk about King Joffrey. Okay, so I knew that that Joffrey was eventually going to become king. Okay, um, and I know little bits and pieces of things just that you hear in in pop culture, but um, mostly I've just been limited to it because I, I tried to read the books to get into it a little bit, and then the books are kind of gross. Yeah, um, so. <laughs> So I really kind of checked out from it and just kind of ignored it because I knew someday I'd want to watch it. And I, and I really like fantasy. And I like the sort of light fantasy. You know, like like it's it like it like it's not magic heavy and it's not dragon heavy. Those yeah. things are kind of like sprinkled in uh, really well. And um, I just kind of wish there was more Rob. You know, he's like this great leader who's like, when, at least so far, I mean, I don't know what happens. But like I kind of wish I knew more about him. Like he's just kind of like there. That's the hard part about that show is that there's so many characters right. that it's hard to spend too much time with a lot of them. So some people always kind of pushed out, but I think they do a good job of kind of rotating it around. Mm-hmm. So there's some characters, I mean, it's it's a really good show to rewatch because there's so many characters that, you know, maybe in season four or five, they're really prevalent. And the first time you watch it through... You're like, oh, this new character is great, and then you rewatch it, and you're like, oh, they were they actually were in season time. one. They just were in the background, or mm-hmm. you know, had a, a small part. So it's it's really cool, I think, in that aspect. So I'm 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 happy you're watching it, and I'm excited to to see you uh, pass through the various stages, since I know the things that are going to happen and whatnot. Which you know, I it's... you're waiting those emails or tweets where I'm like, well, dude, what yeah, this happened and this yeah. happened exactly because I I did the same. Someone thing. just gave birth to a smoke monster, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where that's where I left off last night. The, the fire lady, exactly. So it's like, what the hell is that? Yeah, and it, it gets weirder. So so don't worry. But I I started someone. Uh, I had a buddy turn it on to me, turn me onto it when it was season three had ended, and it was getting close to the start of season four. So I had I raced through the three seasons in like a couple of weeks to try to make sure I could watch season four right when it started. So I was always texting him like, oh my god, this blah 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 <laughs> like. Type of thing. I was disappointed that I knew from reading articles that Sean Bean uh, died mm-hmm. or whatever. Because I think if you you hadn't if read the books read. and you just started that show from episode one when it came you out, think he's I the mean, main guy? yeah, he, I mean, he was the main guy right. for that season, and so you don't think there's any way that Though, they're going to chop I kind his of head just, I'm assuming every character is going to die because that was the thing about it's like they will kill anybody at any time. Like fuck you, anybody will die. So I'm just assuming like Sansa dead, Arya. I think you're gonna be in a little bit longer, but you're dead. Like <laughs> Rob, dead. John, dead. You're, you know, like it's the the mission of a very They're unforgiving dead. world. They're all fucking dead. <laughs> what about you, man? Nerd news. Well, since I always talk about HBO and you're talking about HBO, they debuted a new limited series with uh, Amy Adams called mm-hmm. Sharp Objects. So the first episode of that came out, and it's it's very moody. It's very slow burn. She's a, a reporter. Kind of a, a stretch. She's never done that. Oh wait, yeah. But it's very, very different. Trust <laughs> me. She is a, a alcoholic, you know, down on her luck in St. Louis reporter who is basically forced by her editor to return to the small town she grew up in to report on um, some girls that have gone missing, and you know she has a, a messed up family life and a messed up past. We don't know entirely what that is, but we have some ideas based on the first episode of what it is. It's very grim. It, it atmospherically it reminds me a lot of uh, True Detective. I was gonna say that that's what you so, were saying, like kind of hopped in my mind that first season of True Detective, which may be the greatest season of anything ever. It is for me. The, that for, that first season of True Detective is my favorite, my favorite movie, TV show, any of that. I could have listened time. to Matthew McConaughey sitting in that police station 
just talking about like the circles and, and stuff like that oh for yeah my entire life like i could just listen to him and it you know and and if you think too at that time period i mean that was him when he was washed up come as an actor mm-hmm. and true detective and dallas buyers club and mud were the the start of him becoming a major force again so so going into that i was i was like oh that looks really good but oh matthew mcconaughey like that's gonna be terrible and i still think he's pretty bad in a lot of things but um man he he'll never do better than mm. he did in that like he was i don't know if many people was, will ever do better than he was in that yeah he, he was exceptional and woody harrelson is a, a great great foil for him so but yeah so sharp sharp objects was really cool i finished luke cage and I really want you to watch it because I was a... That, Dude, do you know how much work that is? That's like when my know. wife is like, here, read all of the Harry Potter books. You you won't, but I don't know anyone else that... I don't, I don't know anyone else that will. Maybe I'll ask Jim to do it. Oh, God. But uh, the, the way it ends, I did not see coming at all. And I think it could set up some really awesome things in, a, in season three. But it was, uh, it, was, it was completely never... I didn't see that coming at all type deal and i i i have just, to say will like you just tell me because i'm not gonna sit through because i feel like i'd have to watch iron fist and i don't want to do that and i'd have to go re-watch you don't have to watch, see iron fist you would rewatch you'd the end of watch, iron fist you would have to watch the recap of season one because they don't talk about anything that happens in iron fist in luke cage or i mean there's the only and the only thing you really need to know from the defenders is that misty knight lost her arm i saw the like, defenders oh okay it yeah. has Dare, daredevil's like one of my favorite characters oh, okay but and I and I really liked Luke Cage and I liked the first half of the the first season, but then I got distracted. Se- by second something. second half is boring yeah, okay. of the first season. I was, That's what people have said, yeah. and so I'm not excited so, to slog through 13 see, hours of material well, no, just to have a conversation with yeah, you. Yeah, but this one this one I never got bored with this season. So I would recommend people um, that you you if you haven't seen the first season of Luke Cage, watch the recap. You'll get get all you need to know and then watch this season because I, I thought it was a lot more entertaining. And um, Alfrey Woodard, man, she won't get nominated for anything for it because I don't think it's a property that'll get taken seriously enough. Misty but Knight? No, no, Alfrey oh. Woodard is um, Black Mariah. Okay. In it. And Misty Knight is awesome in it too. I'd be fine if they had just a Misty Knight show, which I think I said last week. Mike Coulter's great casting. Um, but Alfrey Woodard is, is just ridiculous mm-hmm. how captivating she is in that. Um, and so, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen the end of Luke Cage, but how it ends basically is 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 uh, Alfre Water dies, but basically manipulates Luke Cage into being her successor. So it, it basically ends with him basically as Cottonmouth, whoa, whoa. you know, running that club, kicking out Rosario Dawson, you know, thinking he's going to be the the protector of Harlem, but really he's just becoming the the kind of ruler of Harlem. They even do because. He's got his little buddy in the barber shop who keeps talking about um, the Godfather and stuff, and, and talking about how you know Luke Cage is going down that path or whatever. And then they actually do the last shot in the Godfather, if you're familiar, which is saw it a long time ago. It's Michael it. Michael Corleone who goes through the journey of not wanting to do mm-hmm. anything with it, and then to the movie ends with him taking charge of the family. And the, the final shot of that movie is... Him sitting at the desk, isn't it? Him sitting at the desk and people kissing his ring and doing all those things. And his wife, Diane Keaton, who doesn't want any part of that life, Kay, is sitting out there watching and a guy just kind of comes up and shuts the door in front of her. And they do the same thing with Luke Cage and Misty Knight, where she's she comes to the club to be like, why are you doing this? Like, if you, you know, if, if you get on this road, I'm going to have to stop you. And he's like, no, I'm doing the right thing. And then they kind of push her out of the room because he has some people coming to visit him who are the other mob bosses and... They just show her and shut the door, just just like in, in Godfather. That's so really it was, cool. yeah. So they they really took that character and and went somewhere with it. And I think it's cool that they're willing to deviate. Well, I don't know if it's a deviation because I haven't read it, but you know they're willing to take a risk on a character by mm. steering him in that direction. Well, I mean, the easy thing would be just to keep him really clean, like because exactly. you don't want to you don't want to ruin a character. Especially an African American character, you don't want the blowback if you represent him in a negative way, and so you're taking a risk, uh, in some ways. But honestly, it's doing the character more justice by making a better story out of it. Exactly. And if next season was, you know, some guy showing up who has some type of super suit or super drug, so that he can handle Luke Cage's punches, and they just keep hitting each other in the street for the soul of Harlem, 
I'm out, you know, yeah. and I think most people would be out. So th- this was this was cool. I like because I, I feel like I can watch twenty seasons of Daredevil. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and I don't love the the Daredevil right. series at, at all. So you know w- what they've done with Jessica Jones in season two, and what they've done with Luke Cage in season two is to take these characters in different routes and different directions and shake things up. And I think that's that's cool. That's what's going to keep me coming back to at least check it out. And Iron Fist one was was the season one was kind of the death nail for me. And the Marvel, at least being a completist with the Marvel TV shows, uh, the Marvel Netflix shows, I should say, I never cared about S.H.I.E.L.D. But halfway through that, I kind of got bored. Then I watched Defenders. I was afraid of the end of Iron Fist. I'm sorry, the, the end of Luke Cage. I was afraid of watching Iron Fist, watched Defenders, and enjoyed it. But I haven't watched anything else aside from Defenders. Yeah, and, and I don't like, think and you I, need to. I, I think you've gotten to the point where most of these series are self-contained now. Yeah. It's so like they'll make mentions and references to things that happened, but there's nothing in Luke Cage. Even Iron Fist even in it for an episode, and there is nothing you need to know about his series to make that episode make sense. How is he in uh, Game of Thrones as Loras? He's good. Is he? Yeah. I mean, I was, he's good. He's just been role. a little bit so far in what I've seen him. So yeah, no, he's he's good in that. Um, he he does he does fine. I mean, he's never he, you know he's not like it's not like he's Jon Snow like he's not Kit Harrington getting all that screen time mm-hmm. either like he does in Iron Fist. I I don't think he's a phenomenal actor. I don't think he's doing anything to elevate the material, but the writing he's given on Iron Fist is horrific. So I I don't know who would make that stuff sound good Mm -hmm. it was just a a poorly written poorly executed show well it's ike perlmutter is no kevin feige i said it i said it ike well controversial (laughs) most people just love ike perlmutter so much more it is in humans show speaking of taking a stand i'm going to take a stand and end this episode the season finale is this our longest show uh, it's probably, I think we had, I think we might have done one that was about this long, maybe doing the solo review might have been this long, but this is, this is our jumbo sized season finale for us. Sure. It's our season finale as well as Clone Wars season one. We're not going to take any time off We're not or taking whatever, time but why? We're going to keep on, keep it on. There are going to be some changes coming up next week that we've been holding off um, until the end of the season. So we're going to come back better than ever. Next week for Luke Neitzel, I am Maya Madrid. We are kids, seriously, and we're out of here. Bye. Thanks for listening to Kids Seriously. If you didn't completely hate us, feel free to hit like, subscribe, or tell a friend about the show. If you want to write to us and tell us how much we suck, or just ask a question, you can reach us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, hit us up on Twitter at Kid Seriously. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.